for those that don't know me, I'm James Blackburn. I'm uh, one of the team members in Tane Uiha, which is the master men's uh, Wakarama team from the Hirota Wakahoi Club in Gisborne. We've been together now for, as this particular team, for coming up six months. Uh, we got together to compete at the uh, New Zealand Sprint Champs, which are held each year in January um, at Lake Kaurapiro. And we formed it of the intent to try and do well at that competition. And we did so well at that competition, getting a, uh, a bronze medal in the uh, 500 metre sprint and a silver medal in the W12 um, 500 metre sprint as well. And we, although we got disqualified in the uh, turns race, we, we did really well. Um, our actual time was up there with some of the best in the country. So from that, we were very pleasantly surprised. Um, we thought, well, let's have a crack at going to the Worlds, um, which are held every two years. And this year they're held in Calgary, uh, Canada. Um, while Wakarama is traditionally seen as a sport of the Pacific Islands and Polynesia, um, these days it's, there's um, federations spread right around the globe. There's 29 in all, spread from um, South America, Pacifics, into Asia, Japan, Indonesia, and then right through into Europe. Um, so, it, what the International Federation of Ba'a, as it's called, um, Waka or Outrigger Canoeing, um, are trying to do is get the sport, make it global, and they, the aim is to try and get it into the Olympics in the next um, four to eight years, I understand. So, hence the, the, Nash, the world championships are spread around the world. Like this time, they're in um, Calgary. After that, they're in South America, and I understand after that, they're heading to Italy. So the, the recent event we went to was the uh, World Qualifying Championships, which they held up in uh, Lake Carapero on the Saturday of Easter. Um, in our division, we're racing against, we're racing against four other teams. Um, so it's not a lot, but these are the top teams in the country. So in the 500 meter sprint race, we were second just behind the Hayata crew. In our turns race, we were third, uh, just behind one of the Manukau crews and behind uh, Hayata. Um, the race didn't go quite to plan for us, but it was good to know that we've got, you know, if we'd done perfectly in that race and had been behind them, it would have been disappointing. Uh, but we uh, could have done a lot better and know from that we, we can make up the, the couple of seconds that we were slower than the others. The other race we want to be keep competing in in the Worlds is the W12. So you get two six-man crews together and, and uh, one walker or which are lashed together. Um, and the hope is that we can compete with the uh, Hayata team as the, we, the anticipation is that the crew from Manukau will, the two crews from Manukau will join together to form a W12 crew. So for the crew to get to the Worlds, it's, it's quite a commitment. Uh, we've budgeted that it's going to cost around about 50000 for us to get there. That includes entry fees, uh, costs to go to the uh, qualifying race, travel costs locally, Jay Love, as I mentioned, is, uh, lives at Whangara. So for him to come into training is quite a big commitment. You know, all up, he'll, he'll do probably three or 4,000 kilometres just to get to trainings each, each time. Um, there's that. We're going to end up needing to do additional work off, off the water and going to the gym, need gym memberships, things like that. Uh, we're looking at also um, hiring um, rowing machines which we convert into paddling machines so we can do off the water training when the, if the river gets flooded and things like that or at night, you know, because over winter it's going to be hard work training at night because we have limited visibility. Um, and then the major cost we've got is just getting there. It's, um, we've got to fly out of Gisborne through to Calgary, uh, so there's a couple of stopovers on the way. Uh, then we've got accommodation in Calgary. Uh, and things like that. So all up we're anticipating about $50,000 for the trip. Luckily we don't have to get walker there, they're all supplied as part of the event. So everyone is in the same walker, it doesn't matter if you're paddling in a W6 or a uh, W1 single uh, single walker, they're all the same. So that's quite a, quite a leveller and luckily that makes it slightly cheaper for us. So one of the things the team's looking to do to try and get ourselves to Calgary so it's not too much of a commitment uh, financially on our families as we're looking to seek sponsorship for the uh, Tane Uiha team. We've looked at a number of different options for that. Um, so we're hoping to find a naming rights sponsor, someone who wants to 
put their name in front of a, a winning team, a team that's going to work hard for them, uh, both on the water and off the water. Uh, so that's the first one as a naming rights sponsor. Then we're looking for around four or five other main sponsors, which will have corporate benefits that go along with uh, sponsorship proposals we're looking at. We're looking at a number of sponsor, uh, fundraising events, ra uh, ranging from private things that we'll do um, as our team. And then, because there are two other teams going from the club, well, from the, one from the club and one from uh, the, the region, another one from the region, we're looking at doing events that bring in club members and also the regional members. So depending on the size of the event, uh, we'll look at utilising and spreading the, the burden of work so that the sponsorship can go, or that the fundraising events can incorporate everyone that's going to the, uh, the worlds, because the costs are the same for everyone.